Hi, my name is Andrew Phillips. I'm the founder and editor in chief of EM Coach. I'm coming to you with another monthly installation of the EM Coach question in EP Monthly. And this one's an interesting one, I think, because you look at the EKG and it's a wide complex tachycardia. And the question mainly is are you seeing that this is going to be a patient with hyperkalemia causing the wide complex tachycardia? Or do you need to shock this patient because of just a straight up ventricular tachycardia that is unstable? A few issues to come up with. There's a fair amount of actual waveform within that sinusoidal tachycardia. You can see some of the characteristics of the, the T wave trying to, to go in there with the repolarization, which kind of leads you away from a standard tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia that you need to treat with shock or with procainamide or what have you, or lidocaine, whatever. Um, and the other thing is that you know, the patient is presenting with a history of adrenal disease and not having much dialysis. It's important to know that these patients right, are going to be acidemic and it's going to then cause the potassium to exit the cells. In addition to the fact that they haven't had dialysis, so the potassium is already high. So you've got these compounding factors of an acidemia which sends the potassium temporarily outside the cells in addition to an already high serum potassium which can cause a problem. Given that their EKG changes, the first thing this patient needs is calcium. Now, of course, you're going to end up giving the insulin a D50 and some bicarb because invariably this patient being a dialysis patient is going to be, as we mentioned, acidemic. But the calcium is the stabilizing component for that, the thing you need to give to stabilize the membrane in the setting of the sinusoidal, sinusoidal patterns that can devolve into a full VTAC or V-fib. Now, the calcium is part of the hyperkalemia set, but there's a general push towards saving that calcium for when you get changes in the EKG. So just having a hyperkalemia does not mean that you need to give the calcium. You don't want to wait until potentially there are some EKG changes or the patient is hematically unstable or some other characteristic other than simply asymptomatic hyperkalemia. The other thing to note in this is that you look at the rate and by counting squares, you're somewhere around 130, which tends not to be a tachycardia that needs to be shocked, right? This sounds more like a tachycardia that is secondary to the hypercalcemia. And it's telling in the prompt that there is an AICD that hasn't gone off. Most of these AICDs are set to go off at a rate of around 200, sometimes 180, but often 200. And so you know, even if you did have a VTAC, if it was below that threshold, you're not gonna get a shock from it. So for all these reasons, it's not really lining up to be a ventricular tachycardia that's causing hemodynamic instability and one that you need to shock, especially with the history of the adrenal disease and having not gone to dialysis, shoot for that calcium first and see if that's going to resolve things. This is Andrew Phillips, the Founder and Editor-in-Chief of EM Coach. Thank you for looking at the question. I hope you have a good month.